everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. That's right, today we're looking at the anatomy of a blown Whoa! big block Chevy, and quite honestly, it works for more than just big block Chevys. It works for every motor, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, import, domestic. The way to make a good blower motor is actually to start out with a good NA motor, and I know what you're thinking, Richard, I already have a pretty good motor, why can't I just add boost to that? You can, but if you take a less efficient motor and add more boost, that's exactly what you get. You get less power and more boost. But if we then upgrade our motor and make the NA motor more powerful, guess what we get? More power and less boost. And that's always a better combination. So let's jump in and check it out. Okay, guys, let's jump right in and take a look at the anatomy Whoa. of a blown big block Chevy. And quite honestly, the anatomy of a blown big block Chevy carries over to every other motor that's ever been made, whether it's a Ford, Chevy, Dodge, big block, small block, and two, including import and domestic. When we do the things that we're doing to this big block, if we were to do these to these other motors and improve the NA power output, we're obviously going to improve the supercharged power output. And it's going to work the same. But let's start off where we always start off. I just wanted to use a stock motor as a comparison so you can see how much making these modifications and making the motor bigger and more efficient, what that does to the power output. So we'll start off with a basically a base 454. This is a junkyard Gen 6 motor. We just put a carburetor, a, a dual plane intake manifold, and a distributor on it. Replace the EFI. You could also use the EFI. But since we didn't run the 496 with the EFI, we wanted to do, you know, kind of a carb to carb comparison. And this gives us an idea of a starting point. So our basically carburetor... <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, otherwise stock, Gen 6 454. This is what they normally do, 370 horsepower, and they make pretty good torque, being it's a big block, 476 foot-pounds of torque. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we step things up, basically in displacement and improve the head flow and the camshaft and that kind of thing. And we're going to take a look at what those things will do once we eventually add boost. So I'm going to go ahead and put up our 496 results here, and this is our stock 454. And you can see, hey, look, we made a lot more power. So now let's look into what we did to this and then ultimately how it's going to affect boost. Well, the first thing we did is make the motor bigger. So if a 454 is good, a 496, obviously even better. So we took, the first thing we did was take a scat crank. And if you're going to run a blower motor, especially if you're going to put it in something where you're actually using all of this power, you want to maybe step up to a, a, a forge crank. Now, this is a scat uh, 4.25 inch stroker crank for the big block Chevy. I've never broken a big block Chevy crank. I've never broken a cast crank of anything, uh, basically just under power, but I haven't taken them out and run them in a boat and <laughs> run them for minutes at a time, running wide open throttle and zipping across the water or run them in a truck towing a, you know, a big trailer or even race them. We run them a lot on the dyno. You know, we have hundreds of runs on them. I've never broken one, but in this instance, uh, if I'm putting a blower on a big block and I'm going to use it, I'm going to use the power, I think the few hundred dollars extra that it would get going from a cast crank to a steel crank, I think I would step up to a steel crank. But our scat crank was a forge crank. We also have um, CP Carrillo forge rods and forge pistons. Good stuff. I like the CP bullet series stuff, which is what we use. We started off with a Gen 5 block because we were putting a, a roller cam in this thing anyway. And in this case, it was a solid roller cam. The Gen 5 block worked fine, and it works fine at this power level. So the first thing we did was step up in displacement and make the motor bigger, because bigger, as we know, is better. It's going to help this thing make more power. And the other thing it's going to do, I'm going to show you, is if we make this thing more powerful and make it bigger, it's also going to bring the boost down as we go up in power. So now let's talk about making more power. So what we did on this big block, we'll go ahead and take a look at our test description here on our, on our 496. <clears throat> we stepped up in head flow and cam timing to make this thing make a lot more power than our 454. So we stepped up, first of all, with head flow, we put some Promax CNC, the, this has 355, they're actually 340s. So a good set of heads, uh, Airflow Research, Trick Flow, these were Promax. Um, more head flow obviously is going to be better. We're going to make more NA power, and that's going to translate into more supercharged power. And again, like we always want to do, a reduction in boost. Now the camshaft is a critical thing, and here's where a lot of guys go wrong because they think, well, I can't put a big cam in it. I can't put any overlap on it because it's got boost, and all the boost is just going to leak out. That's just nonsense. What you want to do is get the NA combination to make more power NA so that we can then make more power at a lower boost level. Don't worry about the 
all the boost sneaking out the exhaust. So in our case, we ran a Comp BR300. Uh, it's a, kind of my go-to solid roller cam. But the reality is lots and lots of other camshafts would work. In fact, you could just run a blower on the stock motor with a stock cam, and you're not going to obviously you know, get as much power, but you'd still get, it would still gain power, and it would make things better. So the boost will work with a stock cam. It will also work with this fairly healthy solid roller cam. I'll go ahead and put this up. And this is what I would call a medium-sized solid roller cam. We've run boost on much, much bigger cams, 270, 280 at 50, and it works equally well. So with that camshaft, we put a set of 173 roller rockers on it, the Pro Max heads, the, the camshaft, although it was not really high lift, would take advantage of what they have to flow. And then on our NA combination, we ran an Edelbrock Super Victor intake and a 1050 Holley because we, you know, big carburetor looks cool. We had our uh, uh, two and a quarter inch dyno headers on here and we ran this thing first, naturally aspirated. And when we did that, our 496 produced 676 horsepower. And you can see our torque curve nice and flat out here. 589 foot-pounds of torque. So again, pretty easy to see, we, you know, compared to a stock one, our bigger, better motor did basically everything better. But now let's find out what happens when we add boost. Okay, in our anatomy of a blown big block Chevy, let's take a look and see what happens now when we add boost. Now we've made our 496, obviously we've made it more powerful than the 454. We've made it bigger, it's got better heads, it's got a lot more camshaft in it, had a better intake manifold. So in every way, basically it was better. So now let's show how that pays off when we add boost to it. So we have our naturally aspirated 496 here, 676 horsepower and uh, 589-ish foot-pounds of torque. Now let's see what happens when we add a supercharger to this thing. So what we've added, I'm gonna go ahead and move myself down here just a little bit to get out of the way. So what we've added is a 671 supercharger. And this supercharger um, was a uh, 671 that came from the guys at the blower shop. Now the blower shop guys supplied the supercharger and they supply a very good product. It works very well. We've made over a thousand horsepower with this particular supercharger. We combined that with basically the rest of a kit from the guys from Speedmaster, meaning it had the Speedmaster intake manifold and, and pulleys and various things. But the blower itself, like I said, came from the blower shop. And what we did was we're going to take a look at our test description here. We added the blower, we added two 950 HP carburetors. <coughs> Quite honestly, at this power level, a 750s would probably work. Although I don't know that you'd save a lot going from a 750 blower carb to a 950. I don't know the price differences between those two. So let me know in the comments if you guys have ever looked that up. We also ran this with you. The nice thing about a supercharger, especially this root supercharger, is that you can change the pulleys and change the boost. Now, on this combination, we only, only ran 3.4 pounds of boost. We had a 55 tooth blower pulley and a 50 tooth crank pulley, so we were under driving the blower. So, here's what happened uh, at, even at three less than three and a half pounds out here at 6,500 RPM, we were making 809 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 686 foot-pounds of torque. So a couple things happened here. Making our 496 obviously bigger and, and having it flow better with good heads and a camshaft and that kind of stuff made it work very well. The other thing, having this cam camshaft in, it does all the boost, doesn't leak out. It does allow it to make more power NA. And because of that, at this pulley ratio, it only made 3.5 pounds, or 3.4 pounds. So low boost, which is good, less chance of detonation, and it's making more power, which is good. It also allows us to run more engine speed. So if we're running more engine speed, you could see the power curve is still climbing. So that's beneficial if you're for those of the guys that are looking for like lots of peak power. But again, only like three and a half pounds of boost. This is very simple. All this was run on pump gas. We had 28 degrees of total timing in this thing. And this combination obviously worked very well, but because it's a blower, <laughs> naturally we don't stop there. We did a little pulley swapping here. Raised the boost to 6.8 pounds. I'm going to swing myself up here out of the way so you guys can kind of get a better idea. But now we're going to take a look at our pulley combination here. 6.8 pounds we had a so now we've kind of swapped them we've taken the um the 55 tooth blower pulley put it on the crank and taken the 50 tooth blower pulley and <laughs> put it on the blower so we swapped them sped the blower up now it's making a peak of 6.8 pounds where our combination produced 
928 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 790 foot pounds, so just just below seven or just below 800 foot pounds of torque. And you can kind of see this is the railroad track kind of um, thing that goes on when we add boost to these things. You know, we're adding a you know we all basically doubled the boost, added a whole bunch of power. But the nice thing is we started out at a very uh, reasonably high power level. And obviously, it's easy you can make more power than this from a 496. But starting out at 675 horsepower on an NA combination that's running out to 6,500 RPM obviously paid big di dividends. We're making peak power with the blower, the short runner manifold combined with a good camshaft and free flowing heads. We're making peak power at 6,500 RPM. In fact, if we rev this a little bit higher, I think it would continue to the power would continue to increase. And certainly the other thing that we could do is we could change the flow rate of the blower by changing the pulley ratio and and run it run the blower even faster relative to the engine so we could make even more power with this like i said on the 671 in particular we've made more than a thousand horsepower so it will definitely support that the thing that will start happening is as we now go up and boost um you know you'll start get the gains that you get with each pound of boost will start becoming less and less until ultimately you basically get to the flow limit of the blower and then it won't be able to support anymore but the great thing about this 496 good head flow a good size camshaft with yes lots of overlap and it still works just fine but this allowed us to try to maximize the supercharger because these root superchargers work best when you're running like low boost on them so make a good na power and low boost and you can make lots and lots of big block plat power it also works on small blocks and everything else i'm richard please make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff i'll keep testing